Hi garden friends. In this video, I'm going to be sowing some hardy annual flower seeds. So these are all flowers that I use for cutting for bouquets and such. Before I start sowing the seeds, however, I wanted to talk to you about what hardy annuals are and how I use them. So an annual is simply a plant that does its whole life cycle in one year. It does it in annual year. So it will germinate and form leaves and foliage and usually flower and go to seed and then die all in that one garden season or year. And that's as opposed to perennials, which come back year after year, or biennials, which uh, last for two years. Usually they grow foliage the first year and then flower and seed the second year and then die. So these we're talking about are annuals, just one year. You grow them new each year. They don't come back. Hardy means that they can withstand some cold temperatures. Uh, usually means they can withstand some temperatures below freezing. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. And that's as opposed to a tender annual, which really only likes the warm weather, will not tolerate a freeze. And some of these hardy annuals can deal with colder temperatures than others. I garden here in Vermont in a USDA zone five, which means that our average low temperature in the winter gets down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 28 degrees Celsius, and it's pretty cold. While there are a few of these hardy annual flowers that may be able to withstand that temperature, and therefore I could plant them in the fall, most of them I just plant early in the spring. However, if you are especially in zone seven, there are a bunch, I think almost all the ones that I am growing could technically winter over in a zone seven. They might just need some protection. So some people do plant theirs in the fall. They grow them like, I think plant them like six weeks or so before you'd get a frost so they can really establish a good root system and then um, they'll come up in the spring and they'll actually bloom earlier. Um, I didn't, uh, there's a few I could do that with here, but I didn't get any started last fall. So I'll just be starting them all this spring. Some I start inside and some I direct sow outside in the ground. This video, I'm just gonna be sharing with you what I'm starting inside because it's not time to sow outside yet. But the goal is to get them outside in the ground four to six weeks before my average last frost. So for me, um, six weeks out is early April and four weeks is about mid-April. And here in April, we're looking at the average lows at night not getting below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that's negative six degrees Celsius. Um, so when I go to plant them, I will be looking at the you know 10 day forecast and just making sure we're not gonna be getting like into the teens or single digits um, because even though they are pretty frost hardy um, and some of these would probably do fine even down to like, you know, zero degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think it's a great idea for me to be sticking, you know, the baby seedlings out there in super, super cold temperatures. So that's what I am planning to do. So there are two resources I want to share with you quickly if you are looking into starting your own hardy annuals. The first is this book, it's Cool Flowers by Lisa Mason Ziegler. This is fantastic. Um, cool Flowers are just her term for hardy annuals. And she, um, she was, I believe, a flower farmer for many years and now she teaches flower farming. So she also has a YouTube channel you can check out below. But this book is really invaluable if you're growing your own cut flowers. I highly recommend this. The other resource I wanted to mention is another YouTube channel and that is North Lawn Flower Farm. Danielle there is in Pennsylvania and she has amazing videos on hardy annuals. Um, I've learned a lot from her so I just wanted to mention her and link her below as well. She's a zone or two warmer than I am so she can do a little bit more in the fall than I can um, and I will be experimenting more with zone five for those of you who are in zone five with me and, and want to know more, I'll be experimenting and sharing more in future years. I'm just gonna list off for you some of the hardy annuals that I will be growing this year. I won't share sowing all of these in this video, but let me just list some of them out so you get an idea. So um, snapdragons, I'll be starting those today, so I'll share that with you. Stock, Ami, Lysianthus, I already started those in a video, I'll link that here. Uh, Rudbeckia pansies, I also have already started those. Iceland poppies, um, I it's recommended to start those outside, but I'm starting them both inside and outside. Um, Scabiosa or pincushion flower, Canterbury bells, feverfew. And then ranunculus and anemones are also cool flowers. You put them out before a frost, but they have corms. So I think I'm gonna do a separate video on those specifically. I will also be direct sowing some blue pleurum, bachelor's buttons, and nigella, 
and calendula. Delphinium and foxglove are also hardy annuals. Um, I'm not growing those this year. And actually, foxgloves, most foxgloves, I think, are actually biennials, but they can be started early in my understanding. So hopefully that gave you an idea of what hardy annuals are. They really are a great addition to any cut flower garden or farm because you can really extend the season with them. I get blooms from these much earlier than I do my zinnias and cosmos and other flowers like that. And the earlier you get them in, the earlier you get blooms. Today I'm going to be starting my snapdragon, so I'll bring you along for that. And then over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be starting more of my hardy annuals. So I will try to film several of them as I go and share them in this video. Snapdragons are one of my favorite flowers. I have found them so easy to grow and they're so beautiful. And again, because they are a hardy annual, I get blooms earlier than say my zinnias, which are another one of my favorites. So these are all the varieties that I'm starting. I'm not gonna go them through, through each of them individually in this video because I, I want to show you a couple different kinds of hardy annuals and it's just gonna get too long. Um, but I have several of the Madame Butterfly mix, um, you know, some, some of my favorites. Some of them, um, my new ones I showed you in the Flower and Seed haul video. So I'll link that here. And I have noted which ones I want to start for cutting for the orchard and other. Um, I'm going to be trying to grow more like extra for the beds around the house because I'm redoing all those this year. And growing from seed my own annuals is really the most economical way to try to fill up those beds this year. This is potting soil, but it's like a light fluffy potting soil. Um, I, you can, I usually use seed starting mix. This is really just as light as the seed starting mix I usually use. And this is a potting soil from Gardener Supply. I know and trust their products. Um, then I have these seed cell trays, there's six, six cell trays, and they have the holes at the bottom. And they will be going in, I don't have it accessible, but they will be going in a larger tray that doesn't have holes at the bottom. So I'll stick these in the larger tray and I'll be able to bottom water. Um, and this is how I, I have started my snapdragons for several years now, so I'm going to do it this way again this year. And in the future, I may try soil blocking, but let me show you what I do here. So obviously the first thing I do is fill up these with soil. I'm, I'm starting with the snapdragon mix from Hudson Valley Seed Company. Um, and this is actually, um, my plan is to put this in the orchard. So... These are what snapdragon seeds look like. They are really tiny, really, really tiny there. Hopefully you're getting a good view. So there's a couple different ways that people do this. Some people will take a toothpick and wet it and try to get one seed in each of these cells so that the only one comes up and then you're not wasting seeds. Other people will just try to get a few in um, and then if there's more than one that comes up in each cell, they will thin them by just you know cutting off the extra ones that they don't want so that there's then only one per cell. I do this in a way that takes an extra step, but I really enjoy it, so this is how I do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sow this relatively thickly. I'm just gonna put all of this in this one tray right now. And then what I'm going to do is after they have a set of leaves, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to take them out of these, um, these cells and I will transplant them into, so there's one in each individual cell and I'll use more cell packs then, if that makes sense. This is called pricking them out. Um, I've seen a lot of English gardeners do this with different things. They don't often start them in cell packs. They often start different fruits and veg in like a, just like an open tray. They'll sprinkle it over and then they'll prick them out into cell trays later. Um, I just, I've always done it this way. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing. You can see I just sprinkled all that tiny seed over here. So um, there's hopefully gonna be several coming up in each one of these. And then I want quite a few of these mixed. So I'm probably gonna have at least three of these trays, which would be 18, um, depending on how many ones come up that you know look healthy and strong. Um, I might do more, we'll see. Um, so that's the goal. I've got those then. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and put some vermiculite on top. Um, this won't like just a light layer. This won't cover, this won't like block the light from them, but it just helps keep in the moisture so I don't have to uh, water quite as often and worry about it quite as much in that way. I found this helpful in the past, so this is what I'm doing. I actually forgot to do it when I was sowing my onions and leeks, and they're fine, and they've come up actually. So I will I will post a picture of that. I'm sure, I'll post it before this video comes out, but I forgot to put the vermiculite on when I was starting the video, so I put it on later, so you'll see that on there. All right, and then, this is important, and I should have done this before I sewed them, but 
You need to label them. <laughs> I'm trying to find my garden marker. I have a garden marker here. It's just, it doesn't rub off as easily as say a Sharpie, so I like to use it. Um, and this is just like a yogurt container that I cut up um, in to make tags. All right, so this is the Snapdragon mix. These are three different varieties that I'm just growing for cutting flowers in my potager. And so I don't need as many as I do with some of the other ones. I'm just gonna do two cells. Um, with each kind. So there's you know six each, so each of two will be, two, two, and two will be the different kinds. And I'm gonna try not to take too many seeds. This packet has so many seeds in it. So, I mean, inevitably I will have more than six and I will take the ones that look the best and then the other ones kind of go in the compost. Unless with these ones, unless my son wants to, to grow them because he does love the black print snapdragon, so then I will let him grow a few. But okay, and we wanna get our correct label and stick it right there so I know what variety that is. It's really cool, some of the different varieties actually will come up like slightly different colors, so. Bridal pink. The small seeds from Johnny's come in a packet inside a packet. And there's a lot fewer seeds usually in the Johnny's packets than from some of the other places I get, but that's okay. Okay. Bridal pink. And I am just tapping them into this, like on top of the soil there. And Potomac yellow. It'll be nice to have a nice cheery yellow snapdragon this season. lot more to start so I'm gonna go ahead and just fast forward while I do that All my snapdragons are going under the lights in my grow room and I will see you when I start my next hardy annual. Okay, it's about a week later and today the hardy annual we are sowing is scabiosa, uh, which is also called pincushion flower. I have several varieties here. I grew it for the first time last year and I absolutely loved it. So of course I'm growing some more this year. Between last week and today, I actually got in a special order from Bootstraps Farmer. Um, I'll link them below just because I am really impressed so far with the quality of their seed starting stuff. So this is the 72 cell tray and this is their, their shorter shallow tray. Um, I'll also, I also got some of their deeper trays and these six cell um, packs. I don't know, six cell trays, I guess. They're, they're more expensive, but they're much better quality than the ones I was using. So I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna keep using the other ones until they break, which some of them have already, and then I'll work on replacing them. So that's why I have bright purple things in this video.
So this last kind of scabiosa is a little bit different than the other ones I just planted. It is uh, Scabiosa stellata, and it's also known as star flower, and it is mostly used for its dried seed heads. They're really pretty, um, and I actually managed to save, there's only a few seeds in here, but I managed to save seeds from last year's because the seed heads are made up of these. They're similar shape to the other Scabiosa seeds I planted, but much bigger, and they do have this like, looks like a star in the center, hence stellata. I'm also going to go ahead and start some feverfew. So feverfew is actually classified as a tender perennial, but they do also go in, they are frost tolerant, so I plant them at the same time as I plant these other hardy annuals. Later, and today I'm going to start my stock flowers and my flocks. So I believe these are the last two of my cold hardy annuals that I will be starting inside. I have a few that I will be direct seeding and of course I have tender heat loving annuals that I'll start much later. In fact, some of these, if not most of these, will actually be in the ground before I even start my zinnias and cosmos and such. I'm gonna start with the stock today. So I grew this for the first time last year and what happened with several of my cold hardy annuals last year is I don't know if I started them early enough or they just didn't grow and germinate well inside and um, I stuck them outside I think too small and some of them didn't survive. Um, hopefully these will be okay. I'm actually starting them a couple weeks later than I had planned on because I decided to order more seeds. I'll explain why. So there's a couple different varieties, of course, just like other ones, there's lots of different colors, um, but flowers and other plants as well have, um, uh, I guess, different varieties that then have colors within them, if that makes sense. So for example, here I have the cat's variety of stock, um, and I have the white, the ruby, and the lavender blue versions of that. Um, I have iron marine, so this is like the iron series. There's a bunch of iron stocks of different colors. I just have the marine color here. Um, these are, I'm not sure exactly what these ones are because these are from Florette, but these are apricot and um, buttercream. And then I have the quartet series. And last year I grew the quartet rainbow and it was the only one that I grew that I actually succeeded with last year. And it was beautiful and it smells like clovey. It's like I've got a clove scent. I think most of the stock do. And um, what I learned when I was just watching, I think I was watching Nicole at Flower Hill Farm. I love her videos. If you want to grow cut flowers or you just love watching flower videos, I'll link her below. So I think it was her that she had mentioned that the quartet series is the only series type of stock that actually branches and you get multiple stems from. And I was surprised that it had branched last year, but I was really excited about it. I was like, oh, the stock, now I'm gonna get like multiple stems out of each stock. Well, apparently that's only true of the Quartet series. And I only had this one variety of the Quartet series. So um, I went online and Territorial Seeds had a bunch of different varieties in the Quartet series. So I'm going to try these as well. So that's why I was waiting. I was, I was trying to get these seeds. I got Apricot Improved, Deep Yellow, cherry blossom and purple um, and apparently they're also um, the quartet is also an early bloomer for stock as well and so i'm going to start mostly these quartet series i am going to start the other ones i just mentioned as well but i'm going to start fewer of them because they should just be one uh one plant that i i cut and um, then it's it's done i start stock much like i start snapdragons I like to sow them kind of heavily and then prick them out. Let me get started and I have my pre-moistened soil ready to go. I'm gonna start putting this in here. And again, I will link to a specific video from Nicole at Flower Hill Farm here because what I'm going to do is choose which stock I pick prick out because 
Some of them will grow singles and some of them will, will grow doubles. I don't have a room for a ton of each type of plant, so I really want the doubles if, if possible. Um, I will still use a single and they will still be beautiful and it, it may not matter to you, um, but I just, I love the doubles. So there's a way to tell um, if the, when they are just seedlings, when the little first leaves appear, whether they will be a double or a single. Um, it's just going to be a mix within the seeds. You don't, you can't know the, it's like all seeds from the same plant, right? So even if you have a double plant, some of the seeds will be single, some will be double. And when I'm saying single and double, I mean like the flowers themselves. You know how when you have a single flower, it's just like kind of one single ring of, of petals, whereas doubles will have multiple. So they look fluffy um, and really pretty. Um, all flowers are pretty, but I especially like the double flowers. I think, I think I'm not alone in that. I can't do that until these germinate, and so that'll probably be in a separate video that I share with you. So if you're wanting to know now how to do that, I'm going to link to Nicole's video below. least is phlox. So I found some conflicting information on when phlox can go outside. Some seed packets say, you know, wait until after the last frost. Uh, a lot of them say though that you can direct seed them as soon as the soil can be worked. And others say to start them inside and then transplant them out when they just have their first true leaves. Um, so I'm starting them now <laughs> and they, I don't think they are as cold tolerant as some of the other flowers that I've started. So I have them in my schedule to go out about three weeks before our average last frost. So this is annual phlox for me. So this is phlox that I plant, I sow and plant each year, doesn't come back. Um, there is perennial phlox for my zone, I'm in zone five again. I do want to add more perennial phlox to my beds around the house and to the orchard. I think I'm going to be looking at some of the proven winners varieties that I believe have a little bit um, more of a resistance to powdery milk dew. So I'll be, I'll be looking at that. If I get my hands on some and plant them this year, I will try to show you um, as I go. It may have to wait. I have a lot, I have a lot of plants that I want to get in in a lot of different areas, and uh, it's a mult, it's going to be a multi-year process. So. Stay with me here. We'll see what gets done this year. This is the seed. Let me just, it is not quite as small as like the snapdragons and such. A little smaller than the stock, but this does get covered. So I'm going to be aiming for um, probably two seeds, ideally per cell, and then it will be thinned. I'm not going to prick these out or anything. These are what they're going to grow. And hopefully I can just leave them in these trays until I um, plant them in the ground. flocks are both in on the grow shelves um, they don't need light yet because they don't need light to germinate but they all just kind of live in there because that's easier over the last few weeks I have also started some Ami some Canterbury bells uh, let's see some straw flower and Iceland poppies I think those are the ones I didn't share with you um, I decided not to show starting all of them from seed because it, it does end up kind of looking the same 
So um, yes, uh, but if you want more details on how to start like sew any of those or growing any of those in general, um, let me know and I'd be happy to do like a focus on a particular flower or crop. Um, so just let me know in the comments below if that's the case. So that's a great start to my cut flower garden this year. I am so excited about it. I, it always feels so good to get my hands in the dirt, especially when it's snowing outside. So whether you are getting your hands in the dirt inside or outside, I hope you are having a great time. And until next time, happy gardening.